solve x y prime plus three y equals sine x over x squared. Also, of course, obviously x cannot be zero. And I have an initial condition for this. y of pi over two equals one. So you probably need to scroll up and somewhere up here. So check if it's in the linear form. Here we are. Do you want this up or the problem up? You know, let me just write solve. I'll write the uh, problem here. X y prime plus three y equals sine x over x squared. So make sure it's in that form. It's pretty obviously in that form right there. Oh. Why is it not in the right form? Yeah, the stupid x over there. So how do you get rid of this x? Divide it out. Divide it out. So write everything out. This shouldn't mess anything up. You still have functions of x where you need functions of x. What's the initial condition? Uh, I'll, I'll scroll down. and uh, You only need that after you integrate. So you're probably a minute or two away from needing it right now or more. All right, so I'm going to give you guys time to solve this. I'll give you three minutes to see what you can do. And I'll walk around and answer any questions you have. So it won't be, if you don't have that y, you can't, you can't do everything else here. And if that's squared, likewise, if that's squared, you're basically screwed also. You can only go if it's y to the first power. And that's actually the reason they call it linear is because that y needs to be the first power. That's why they call it linear, even though it's not. There's many parts that aren't linear. Like we have a sign of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, three, uh, yeah. Three over 
where the cube right. appeared is super important. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. We can pull it this. Yeah. 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 You don't do the line. You don't do the line. Right? Yeah, I have two as well. Good. That's yeah. Yeah. times one. Right. So there's three of reps. That's your one. Yeah. So if you take the, that's just three. Yeah. Three X, right? Let's throw a row. So any questions getting to exact? So on this one, unlike the homogeneous, you can make sometimes different choices and still get to the same answer. Uh, this, there shouldn't be a choice here. It's just you go this way. There's not an option on this one. Even with those linear ones, you can choose which of the two you let u equal, if you remember back to our linear coefficients. But this one, there's no choice. So we get exact, and we don't actually get to apply our initial condition until after we integrate, and that will knock out our constant. So at this point, I'm going to just say dot, dot, dot. So you're going to take the, you're going to basically integrate both, and then union up, in quotes, union up the different terms you get, add them together. Anybody want to see this solved all the way? It's completely OK. All right. So let's go ahead and solve this all the way. So the way you solve exact, you just basically integrate these separately. So you integrate these separately, then union the terms together. What is the integral of x cubed dy? x cubed y. It's the y antiderivative. So there's no, it's basically constant. And other one looks like it'll be more tricky. It shouldn't be too bad. So 
we're doing a dx antiderivative here. 3x squared antiderivative is x cubed and bring over the y. And negative sine antiderivative, we'll try negative cosine and then we'll check. And derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I need a plus. So I did a little guess and check on that second one. All right, how we union these, you don't want to count repeats. So I don't want to double count. And any term that has x and y in it should appear both locations. So the only unique terms will have just x or just y. And so our solution, you add these up, x cubed y plus cos x equals constant. So here's where we union them up, right down. That's a really bad arrow. So there we're unioning them up by adding them. The reason I don't just say sum them together is because you don't want to add two of the terms I have circled. You just want to add one of those guys. All right, how do we get rid of our C? So we'll go with the initial condition, y pi over 2 equals 1. And remember this is an xy, the x is pi over 2, and the y is 1. So we go pi over 2 for x, 1 for y. And cos pi over 2 is 0, so there's our constant. And just plugging that value back in, we get our original is just equal to pi cubed over 8. And you can check by taking a derivative, solve for y prime. This particular uh, equation here, you could solve for y explicitly and then take a derivative. You didn't have to go implicit derivative. A lot of times when a y appears in more than one place, you can't really solve for y. Even something super simple, oops, let me put y in here. Even something super simple like y plus sine y equals x, you can't even solve for y in something as simple as that. So we just looked at linear, uh, a linear ODE, and now we're going to look at basically higher orders. And these are called Bernoulli equations. So it's going to be similar to what we just did. This is just the generalized version. So it's called the Bernoulli equation. And the form is really uh, similar to the linear form we just saw. If I stopped right here, it would be the same exact form. The only difference is we get an additional y to the n on the right side. So we're going to do this in different cases. Our first case, n equals 0. Well, we just solved that type before. And we called that, I just want to get the name right, a linear ODE of first order. So that's case n equals 0, case n equals 1.
Let's try a little algebra right here. So I see there's a y and a y. So let's get those two y's next to each other. So we'll subtract the right side over to the left. Now factor the y out. And let's go ahead and distribute the dx across. And dy plus px minus qxy dx. How can I solve this? What type of an ODE do we actually have? I think there's only five or six types that we've done so far. Separable. Why is it separable? What do we have to do to separate? Divide by y. Divide by y. So we got almost all just x right next to the dx. And we just got to get the y out. So here we go. 1 over y dy plus whatever. The only important thing, the p minus q, those had to be functions of x, or else it wasn't going to be separable. If there's any y's in there, that wouldn't, it would not be separable. So case n equals 1 leads to separable. So let's assume case uh, that n is not 1 now. What I did before, case n equals 0, that was sort of the just familiar right there of how it relates to what we were doing. So this case we're about to look at will also encompass the n equals 0 as well. So you have a choice when n equals 0, which way you want to go. All right, so n is not 1. So we're going to multiply by. One minus n y to the negative n power. So what did we start with? Right there at the top of the screen, dy dx plus pxy. I'm gonna write lowercase q. I keep wanting to write that. I'm just going to go ahead and switch to lowercase q. Oh, it's y to the regular n, not negative n. And we're going to multiply by, for no good reason, well, there is a good reason, but it's not obvious. We'll multiply by 1 minus n, y to the negative n. So there's three places to distribute. There's two on the left and only one on the right. And we're going to let u equal y to the 1 minus n. Now, are there any algebra questions before we start doing some calculus? Oh, there are all supposed to be little q's here. The, I think the book and the notes, my handwritten notes that I'm reading from have capital Q. But I really want to write lowercase q for some reason. So if I make a mistake, I'm just going to write q equals q, and then it doesn't matter which of the two I write. And p pretty much looks like a lowercase p, so uh, 
they're all referring to the same letter or the same function. All the P's are P's and Q's are Q's. All right, U equals Y to the one minus N. So I did something a little tricky with this Y power. That's just Y to the negative N times Y. So it's one more than Y to the negative N. Oh. <laughs> There we go. All right, we're going to make this sub, so we better figure out what is du, how does that relate to dy, if we're going to be taking out the y's and replacing them. So du equals 1 minus n y to what power? Negative n. Negative n. So you're taking 1 away from 1 minus n. So that's just minus n, and we just get a dy after that. Oh, I see that right over there. So we're going to sub out, oops, we can sub out all of that stuff right there, and all the way over to the dy is going to be replaced by du. And let's look everywhere else we can make that sub. There better be no y's hanging around when we're done. So all the y's need to be out of here. And over here inside the rectangle, I see a u hanging out over there. So let's go make these substitutions. du over dx plus 1 minus n p of x u <coughs> equals 1 minus n q of x. Why is this good? Well, there's no Y's, but, they, but we got U's everywhere. So we did change a letter, and we obviously changed the form a little bit. So here's where we started. Let me use a highlighter instead. That's where we started. And where we ended, should be nice. That 1 <laughs> minus N, that's just the number. So this is, this is the linear form that we saw before, the linear ODE form. So this is the first order linear ODE. So the reason we learned how to solve first order linear first is, yes, it is technically a special case of this, but this reduces down to linear. Now it's a linear ODE in u and x. So we change variables, we're going to solve it, and then of course we have to unchange back to x's and y's, not to u's and x's. And we have one example problem. Solve y prime plus xy equals x over y cubed. So step one, get in the right form almost in the right form. The only thing preventing it is we need to write y to an n power, not 1 over y to the n power. So the only thing that's wrong is y is in the denominator. y is supposed to appear as a product. So all I do is force it to be a product. x, y, negative 3. Right there. So we just forced it. And y prime 
all of our nodes, it was dy dx. So I'll switch it back to dy dx. All right, what is n equal? Negative 3. What was the only n value that wouldn't work with our uh, work that we did? Better not be 1. So good news is it's not 1. That was the only assumption we made right there that it was not 1. So n equals 3. And we're going to multiply by so 1 minus so 1 minus n y to the negative n, which is 1 minus negative 3 times a y to the negative 3. So we're going to multiply by 4y to the negative 3. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, another thing that happens, if you notice, the right side, all the y to the n's disappear after you multiply. So if you still have y's on the right side, you did something wrong, which I did right there, just to demonstrate that. So we got minus negative 3. Four y cubed. Okay, so multiply by that four y cubed. So now we have four x over y squared. No, oh, four x y to the fourth equals x. 4x. Now we make our u substitution. We didn't do anything else first. No. Just make our u substitution. Let u equal, was that y to the 1 minus n? Yeah, y to the 1 minus n. Now you want to be careful again. 1 minus negative 3. So that's y to the fourth power. So u equals y to the fourth. du equals 4y cubed dy. So here's another checkpoint. 4y cubed dy better appear inside your ODE. That's a really nice substitution right there. So I see my 4y cubed. So we have our linear ODE right now, and I'm going to scroll to the top. 4x. Oh yeah, yeah, the x just disappeared. Absolutely. Xu, yeah. I feel like this would be separable, or could be separable. Yeah. you. But I, I'll be able to factor. So I have a four x u minus one mm -hmm. equals zero. Look at that fancy factoring and subtracting at the same time. Oh, my x is, my u is turning into an n. 
So you can solve this as separable right here, or you could, so this is separable, and this one is a linear, right there, linear ODE, linear ODE. So you have choices. Which one's easier to solve? Separable. So let's go linear, get more practice. So forget that that's separable, pretend like you didn't notice that, and let's go and do the linear way. If you're really disappointed, how about you solve it separable? Everybody else solves it linear. I got all the way there, and I was like, <laughs> then you decided to go the other way. All right, so go the linear way. So hopefully it's on your paper. I'm going to scroll up to the linear instructions how to do linear again. I'll translate into use, although it's not, not really a big deal. So there's your integrating factor in x's and u's in the blue. Calculus questions getting to here. And my next question is why is this a good place to be? It better be exact. That was our goal. So, what is the u derivative of the term in front of dx? Oh, You're thinking too hard. Yep, just to constant, take the derivative of u minus 1 is 1. So it's just that 4x e to the 2x squared. What is the x derivative of the term in front of du? 4x e to the 2x squared. Yep, so e to the 2x squared times derivative of 2x squared, which is that 4x. Not, none of this is coincidental. There should be a happy, not surprise, but a... I don't want to say happy ending, but I just did. A moment of enlightenment? A moment, I would say a satisfaction at the end of doing all the theory to get here. So it should not be surprising that it is exact if you did your steps correct. That's, a, that's what we spent all that time showing that no matter what, as long as n's not 1, we get exact at the end. So 
We better have exact is what I'm saying. It's not a coincidence. It was a coincidence that we had separable. That was a coincidence. A happy coincidence. A happy, coincidence. happy little accidents. Hey, that was me. That's Bob Ross. Don't mess with Bob. All right, so solve it like it's exact. So anti-differentiate both of these and then add up the terms. If so, if I do that, I very likely won't have exactness anymore. <laughs> In which case, I'll be separable, and <laughs> um, there is lots of ways to solve these. Um, so I try to avoid going separable because it's the easy way that you don't really need more practice. At least it, that's my opinion on separable. It's useful, but a little bit too easy to practice on a regular basis. <laughs> now, generally, if you're trying to solve a problem, you usually want to take the most reasonable, easiest path to the solution. But my goal at this moment is to teach you, not necessarily to solve this problem the easiest way, which is why we're not solving it the easiest way. That integral is fun. So any antiderivative questions? When I was solving this, my intuitive mind wanted to just do that W sub in my head and just write down the final answer. All right, this form is not the best right here because it's mixing x's and u's together. So it's not the most obvious. I think the second form is better and I see that there's my repeated term right there that better get repeated because it has x's and u's in it. So it better appear both places. And then my unique term is the minus e to the uh, 2x squared. So adding those two together. Equals constant. But u is something we just made up. So we have to unsubstitute for u. So somewhere. Oh, too far. U is y to the fourth. Is that your separable answer? And remember, your constant might change, so yeah. you may get some different constant. Yes, it is. Sorry. All right. I forgot to sub back in the Yeah, got it. So 
So any questions on this problem now that we are down to here? Just wanted to check. When you check for exactness, what did you do? Uh, I verbally checked. I didn't check. Uh, I didn't write any of the check down, but I'll do that in blue. So I look at the x derivative of that term. Okay. So it's like a partial derivative. Yep. Yeah, okay. And then I have to check does that equal the u <coughs> derivative of the other term? So you're checking the derivative of that variable not next to that term, basically. So these are good questions that your cheat sheet should be able to answer. So if you're wondering, if you're doing your homework, wondering, oh, is this exact? I'm not sure. I don't know what exact looks like. And if your cheat sheet doesn't have what exact looks like, that needs to go on your cheat sheet. So you want some area to classify this is exact, this is linear coefficients, this is a linear ODE, this is, if you still need separable, all these things. So you need some large section on your cheat sheet to classify. And in that section, it's probably a good place to put how do you solve the different ones. You got a new form, Bernoulli, so that gets its own section right there. And a lot of your, in solving a Bernoulli, you, you need to reference linear. So a lot of the solutions are going to reference other types of differential equations. So to solve a Bernoulli, you have to turn it into a linear and then know how to solve a linear. So a lot of the forms are going to reference other forms that we did before. So maybe a chronological order would be a good way to write them out because they're generally going to reference things that came before. Like case n equals 0, case n equals 1, case n doesn't equal 1. Yeah, well. Yeah. This so technically the only one you really need is this case n equals one right n not equals one because the other ones you'll probably recognize in a different form as opposed to Bernoulli. So I don't think a Bernoulli is a bad way to solve when n does equal one. It's also a bad way to solve when n equals zero. It's just too much work. So when n is zero or one, you should go you should go the easy way. Yeah. Yes. Um, and if any time p of x equals 2 of x, it will be separable from q of x. If p of x equals q of x? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, it will cancel out then. Yeah, so there'll be lots of, like, oh, if this thing is happening, it, I can turn into this other form. If this other thing is happening, I can turn it into the other form. Yeah, there'll be a lot of, of those relationships going on. So I would only put then equals not equal one case on your cheat sheet.